So I'm starting off in my 10 by 10 inch journal and I'm going to begin by adding some texture to that base layer. Now I'm using the Winsor & Newton modeling paste and the Weird Science stencil by Indigo Blue and I'm only going to be using these circle pattern down the left hand side. So I'm going to take some modeling paste, put it onto my craft mat and just apply that in strategic areas around my page. So I'm happy with the way the modelling paste has gone through the stencil, so I'm just going to clean up a little bit of the excess that's managed to get its way through. And then, before we can add any colour at all to this page, we need to make sure that this modelling paste is 100% dry. So I'm going to take out my heat gun and I'm going to give it a good blast until I'm happy that everything is nice and solid. So the first bit of colour I'm going to be using today is this Lagoon acrylic paint from Do Crafts. It's a very inexpensive craft paint, still acrylic so still perfect for art journaling and this is the white which is running out. I've not got that much left in this bottle now and I think this is probably all I'm going to get out of it. And I'm just going to roughly mix the paint on my craft mat with the brush uh, as I apply it onto the page. And I'm just going to apply it in random strokes. There's no plan I just want to get it on there and it doesn't matter if it's darker in areas and lighter in others because that just adds to the overall texture effect on your art journal page. So now I've got some of that paint on the page I'm just going to loosen it up a little bit by spritzing it with water I'm going to add as much on as I can without it starting to wrinkle the page up and I want to try and get a little bit of movement on the page but I don't think I'm going to get much off that so I'm just going to um, hurry it up a little bit with my brush if you know what I mean. I'm just going to bring that paint down the page and then just kind of blend it out and get a little bit of texture um, and where the texture paste is it's starting to go a little bit lighter so you can see that texture a little bit more. So I'm going to grab the spritzer again, add a little bit more water this time, go a little bit heavier and then as you can see the paint is starting to move now. So I'm going to grab a piece of tissue and I'm going to start just lightly dabbing the page and then lifting some of that paint off from where the texture paste is and also just to move it around the page and kind of get rid of those um, areas where there is no colour. So I'm going to go through a few processes in here with um, a baby wipe and also with the heat gun I'm going to try and heat some of the paint but also use the baby wipe to reactivate the paint on the texture paste to try and bring some of that whiteness from the texture paste underneath to the surface and then as you'll see in a moment the paint that's actually on the baby wipe I'm not going to waste I'm actually going to use that to clear that space at the bottom that's still white. So I'm just going to add a little spot of the Lagoon paint back onto my craft mat, grab that with the baby wipe and then just add that to the bottom of the page. So just adding a little bit more to it just to make sure that there is enough to get it moving around on the page. The paint would have been a lot easier to use if I'd pre-gessoed the page before I started to put anything else on it but I was just in that kind of mood today where I just wanted to start throwing colours down um, and so I didn't really prepare properly. But that's okay, it is an art journal page and you don't necessarily have to put gesso on the page all the time. So I'm going to use the last remnants of the white in that bottle and I'm just going to grab a spatula, 
and I'm just going to scrape some of the white paint across the texture on the page and just add a little bit more depth and dimension with some texture with that paint across the page. Not an exact science, it just goes where it wants to go and that's the beauty of it. It's kind of a random act so all I'm doing is just adding it around the page just to um, just to break up that block blue. I'm fairly happy with it as it stands now so I'm just going to have a quick tidy up and then grab my heat gun and then give it a real good blast and then I can move on. It's time to add some focal images. So this is a number eight craft tag from Ranger and I'm just using a one and three quarter circle punch from Stampin' Up and I've also punched out some from some book text and then I've actually cut out by hand a larger circle um, because I can't find my two inch punch anywhere. Um, I think Ian's borrowed it and not brought it back. So I'm just using bog standard craft glue. This is a Pritt stick which is no different to any other stick glue that you can purchase from any stationers or craft shop anywhere in the world. And I'm just going to stick down those book text circles and the craft tag circles on my page. And you'll see what I'm going to turn those into in a minute. So I'm happy with the placement of the circles on my page. I'm happy that they're nicely stuck down and they're not going to go anywhere. So it's time to move to the next stage. So this is the tree branch archival link from Ranger. And I've also got out the mini specimen stencil from TCW. And I'm just going to use those circular patterns that you can see. Now they just happen to be the right size for my book text circle. So I'm just going to add some of that tree branch ink through the stencil onto those circles on my page. So I'm just going to randomly go around and then try and fit and then add at least some of that brown ink to each of the circles. And then just as a random thought, I thought I would add some of the brown up into the top part of the page as well, just to kind of tie some of those colours together. Um, I don't do too much, it's just a very, very light touch, and that's about all I'm going to do. I did think about using the butterfly as well, but I thought, no, that didn't really go with what I wanted to do on the page, so I abandoned that idea altogether. Instead, I use the remnants of what's on the blending sponge, and I create a border around my page and I'm just going to add that on all three sides because obviously I can't do the top part of this because it's a wire bound uh, or a spiral bound um, journal so I just do it to the sides and the bottom. So now, just using what's left on the sponge, I'm just going to lightly rub over the top of the texture paste in that background just to kind of bring that texture a little bit further forward into the foreground. So I now want to add a little bit of detailing to my circles. Now this is the food ball pen and all I'm going to do is just add some squiggles and scribble lines all the way around my book text and craft tag circles and then I'm going to grab a ruler um, from my little drawer that I have here 
and then I'm going to carry on with the embellishments and turn those circles into trees. So here's my ruler as promised and I'm just going to draw a straight line with the food ball pen and then just create one branch on each of the trees. So now that my lollipop or balloon trees are done, I just need to ground them. So for that, I'm gonna grab some more of that book text that I've already used, and I've torn it into horizontal strips this time. And I'm just going to apply three pieces of that book text to the bottom of the page to create a kind of um, grounding for my trees. So that's the third piece down. So I'm going to grab my archival ink again and that ink blending foam and I'm just going to give that book text a little bit of darker colour just to bring it in with in line with the rest of the page. So we've already got the brown around the edges, we've got the brown actually on the trees itself so it wouldn't look out of place if this was also brown. And then I'm going to grab the food ball pen again and then I'm going to add a little bit of doodle um, detail in just to the bottom of the page on that grounding that I've done. But before I do that, I'm going to cut and trim off the excess of that book page from my journal page. Now that's all nicely trimmed, now I can grab my food ball pen. Okay, so now my ground doodling is complete. Time to add the final touch of some white splatters. So because my previous white paint has run out, I'm going to be using the Reeves Titanium White Acrylic. And I've just put some on my craft mat there and I've spritzed it with water. And then using my fan brush, I'm just going to add some splatters around the page. So I'm now just going to leave that to dry for 10 minutes, go make a cup of tea, and then when I come back, we'll be ready to add our little phrase. These are the small talk stickers from Tim Holt's Ideology, and I've pre-chosen which phrase I was going to use from this set, and this reads, Not all who wander are lost, which I think is a really cool quote for this particular page. I think it fits in quite nicely. So I'm pretty happy with that page now. It was intentionally simple. All I wanted to do is add a little bit of texture and not have too many layers on this art journal page because I think too much would sometimes spoil it and sometimes less is more. I hope you've enjoyed watching this art journal page come together. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up. 
share the video with all your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of this video. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.